resurrection this day when Jesus ascended into heaven. Uh, if you've not already done so, I invite you to sign and pass the friendship pads in the aisle sections of the pews. Today is the day of jubilant praise concert at 4 p.m. The gathering music will begin at 3.50 and uh, the concert begins at 4 p.m. We need some help um, organizing this space after this worship service. So if you could help, we would uh, welcome uh, your participation in that. Also, for anyone who would like to get some exercise in addition to hearing great music, you are free to park at St. Irenaeus Church and uh, just walk over the block and a half uh, that would be. Uh, Sully is the movie that will be seen this Friday evening, 7 p.m. in Friendship Hall, about uh, Captain Sullenberger, uh, played by Tom Hanks. A great movie um, for those of you who've seen it. Um, this Friday is also National Donut Day. So in addition to free popcorn, you will receive um, free donuts as well. So that's this Friday. And... Um, we don't always uh, get to say farewell because we don't always know when uh, people are leaving. However, um, we know that Karen Smith will be uh, leaving shortly. She has been a choir alto, a member of the worship arts team, a co-coordinator of funeral luncheons, and she is in the process of moving to Wadsworth, Ohio. A great church member, thank you for all your contributions to our church, and we wish you Godspeed. Our God reigns. God holds our world and our lives securely. The God who deserves our worship and our praise. Amen and amen.
Almighty God, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Confess our sin together. Too often, Lord God, we are hesitant in our proclamation, seeking safe opportunities to speak our faith. Too often, Lord God, we are half-hearted in our service, reluctant to stand out from the crowd or to attract criticism. Too often, Lord God, we live as if independent on our own resources, relying on our perceived skills and modest insights. Lord God, forgive the poverty of our efforts and the frailty of our faith and open wide our hearts and minds to the imminent presence of our risen, living, and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. Filled to overflowing with the presence and grace of Christ and sure of his love, we are forgiven. This is uh, the celebration of Ascension Sunday. The passages that we read from Scripture today are about the Ascension. Uh, we read in chapter 47 of the Psalms uh, words about Christ and his kingship. And also here again, the words the choir just sang as the intro. But first, let us approach God's throne of grace in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, your word is fresh and new every time we read it. It is exciting, it is challenging, it is blessing. And thus we come to your word this day, all in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits on his throne, holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the Lord God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Indeed, this is the word of the Lord. Be Children, would you join me on the carpet in front of the stairs? Good morning. Good morning. You guys doing well? Good. Good. So I have a little question for you. 
It's got two answers. So think about it. What is always there, no matter what, and is up? Can you guess? What do you think, Noah? You got one, Jesus. Yes. And there's a, there's a really, a really uh, easy one if you go outside and look up. What's up when you go outside, Hannah? The sky. Yeah. So, so when you go outside and you look up and you see the sky, what's your favorite thing about it? The clouds. And bright blue. You know one of my favorite things are the sunsets, too, because then it turns different colors. It looks like cotton candy. Yeah, I love the sky. And it's always there. Have you ever woken up one morning and looked up and the sky was gone? That would be really weird because it's never happened before. The sky is always there. And in that way, the sky is like the second answer, Jesus. Jesus is also always there no matter what. No matter if we wake up and it's a good day, a bad day, a rainy day, a sunny day. It doesn't matter. Jesus is always there. And today is the Sunday where we remember when he went up, just like the sky. So after he died and he rose again, he spent some time with his disciples on earth. And then when the time came, he rose into heaven. And it actually just went up and was taken away by a cloud. So we, we remember that because now Jesus is in heaven watching over us, but he is always there. He didn't really go away. He's still with us. He's always there, just like the sky. So when you go outside every day and look up, think about how Jesus is right there always with us, just like the sky is, okay? Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for never truly leaving us, for always being there, for always listening and being ready to forgive and guide us, um, and just for always being, no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We turn to the Acts of the Apostles. This is Luke's second book to his friend Theophilus, who talks about the events around the ascension. Listen for the word of the Lord. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. 
while staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, <clears throat> they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, <coughs> but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. When he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Indeed, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? Lord, it is your truth that sustains us. Your breath enlivens us. Your love empowers us. Speak to us again this day. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm a, um, I'm a fan of movies. Um, good movies, good movies. Um, not, I'm not a fan of a particular star, uh, but a fan of movies. In fact, Lynn and I, uh, make it our mission every fall to be sure that we see all, what, seven or nine of the movies that are nominated for Best Picture. We want to be sure that we see them to make sure that the Oscar people voted correctly. <laughs> I know which reviewer to read because I know which re re reviewer agrees with me and um, which one not to, which ones I can trust. I've actually taken an informal class on discovering theological themes in everyday movies and actually look for them whenever I watch a particular movie. I sometimes use movie scenes or movie dialogues as illustrations in the classes I teach or the sermons I preach like I'm about to do now. I've played around with developing a class I've often thought it'd be fun to do uh, about uh, discovering the gospel in movies. I just think it would be so much fun for me to research. Although not one of the greatest movies I've ever seen, certainly not on the top of my must-see list, sorry, I have been captivated by the little film Risen. It's been shown here in the Friday film series. It's now on cable, run fairly often. It's the story the story of a Roman centurion. He has been tasked by Herod to discover where they have hidden the body of Jesus and thus to disprove the resurrection. And it's the story of him searching uh, to find this missing body, which, of course, he doesn't find. The story, of course, is fiction. It does, so it does star Joseph Faines, as the centurion, and um, I was pleased to read uh, a reviewer said of the movie, while it descends often into the melodramatic, it is a welcome addition to faith-based movies. And it's the portrayal of the disciples in this movie that so grabbed me just the other week when I was watching it again. They are portrayed as folks after the, after the resurrection with wide-eyed enthusiasm exuberant action, childlike love. It's almost like watching kids at play. And what struck me, it's so different from some of the faith-based movies we see, where the apostles walk around with long faces in bathrobes, uh, bemoaning the absence of Christ to them. They are just full of joy and enthusiasm. I thought, you know, I guess if I was there, that's probably how I'd react. I'd be running around and jumping around and telling everybody what had happened. So after the resurrection, Jesus spends 40 days <coughs> with them, and they, in the movie he appears and disappears, which is a little eh, melodramatic. 
But the idea that caught me is they think that they can find him. So after a time with him, they leave immediately and they go out into the town or they go up into the field and they start calling for him. In one scene, they're out in the desert and they go, Yahshua, Yahshua, as if he'll respond like a, like a child who is lost at the fair. He sees them one last time, then he ascends to the Father, and these men, bubbling with enthusiasm, take off to tell the story about the risen Lord. The other thing that I noticed about this particular movie and the way they portray the disciples is that it's, it's that the final curtain on Jesus' passion has never really come down for them. The ascension is not an ending, but a beginning. They're still going around calling for him, searching for him, worshiping him, and trying to live lives of peace and justice. Ascension for them is just the beginning. Now, we Presbyterians are not usually big on celebrating Ascension Sunday. And I wondered, as Steve mentioned the fact this morning that this is a celebration of Ascension, how many of us in our hearts went, huh? Um, it's not one of the minor holidays that we celebrate. When, in case you missed it, it was last Thursday. That was the day of Ascension. Ascensions are just not in our realm of experience, and we've always wondered, why such a big exodus? Why did Jesus take so much, make such a big deal about his leaving? Because if you remember, Luke writes about this at the end of his gospel, and he writes about it at the beginning of his, the book of Acts, so it must have been something big, <clears throat> because he writes about it twice to be sure that the church, the young church, understands. <clears throat> And we are, though, hard-pressed at times to explain the meaning or the impact of ascension on our day-to-day -day lives. I had that same trouble until years and years and years ago I came across a book by theologian Leslie Weatherhead. His book is titled A Plain Man Looks at the Cross. It's written, it was written in 1955. My era. <coughs> <laughs> Throws some light on Jesus' passion and help me move in that time away from movie scripts to the reality of what God did on that mountaintop 2,000 years ago. And what Weatherhead does is takes us back to the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, remember <coughs> that scene where Jesus is talking with his father. Jesus says, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. And Weatherhead quickly points out that Jesus never says, let this death pass from me. Rather, he speaks of the cup. And we know what a cup is. It's a container. It's a receptacle. You fill it up. You pour it out. You fill it up again. You pour it out again. The author states that what this prayer is, it's the prayer of a homesick son Jesus, talking with his father. I can die this death, father, but must I forever pour myself out for these people? Can't I just come home? God whispers back to his beloved son, no, I need you to be alive forever and to be the savior of the world. It's not the death that changes Jesus from the man of Nazareth to the Savior of the world. It's his willingness <coughs> to be spiritually alive forever. A spirit set free <coughs> from spiritual and I mean, from physical limitations. I think that's what he meant when he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. God was not willing that awful crucifixion on his beloved son. God was willing the salvation of all of his other children, <coughs> here I go again, through the saving presence of Jesus in all time. He was willing the salvation of others through Christ's ascension. Disciples really didn't grasp this until the, the ascension. <coughs> they wanted his physical presence. We want his physical presence too. 
Now, uh, and at Pentecost, though, and for all time, in this moment and forever, Jesus is alive. The body of Christ returns to God like the rush of a mighty wind, but his spirit returns to us. He kept his promise. He told his disciples, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And as our contemporary translation has it, even to the end of the world. You remember earlier, Jesus promised, I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you. In a little while, the people will not be able to see me, but you'll be able to see me because I will live in you. I love the fact that <clears throat> we were able to sing part of that old gospel song this morning. Uh, Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. I wish we just had a, a gospel soloist. Is there a gospel soloist here that can sing that for us? <laughs> <coughs> now, how are, we to, how are we to live with the Ascension news? Our responsibility as we experience Ascension and as we participate in Pentecost is to lift our cups, to lift our lives in preparation for the Spirit to fill them and to fill the empty places where we so need to be touched, to close the wounds that we have, to restore the health that we so desire, to mend relationships that have been broken, to offer protection as we move through our world, to help with decisions that we need to make, to bring peace that we so desire, to restore hope. Those first disciples were so full of the Spirit that they could not keep from worshiping and they could not hide their happiness. Neither should we. I often wonder what it would be like if we kind of got fired up with a spirit and um, left the church um, as we leave and, and as we left, um, flap our iron arms as we go out into the, onto Pennsylvania Avenue and 5th and 4th. Think that would bring new members? certainly be wondering what's happening here. <laughs> but we are so filled with his presence that we should be worshiping, praising, and not hiding our happiness. So this morning, or later this evening, when you're home and eat dinner, I want you to ponder this question. How have I received the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God. How has the Spirit filled my cup? Do I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that He comes to me every moment of every day when I receive the fullness of His presence? Do I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that He fills my cup continually? On a deeper level, you might wonder, and I have to thank Leslie Weatherhead for this, you might ponder this. What kind of love would cause a human being, Jesus, to be willing to become a living spirit, alive forever, in a sinner like me? What on earth could have convinced him to become the cup that he was discussing with God in the garden that night? Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. He was human and divine. So are you, so am I. Because God created us as humans and fills us with the Spirit. The Spirit that's set free, that ascended into heaven alive, that returns to us to fill our cups. Each day, every day, all the time. Let us pray. Gracious God, long ago you created human life you breathed into us the breath, your spirit. We were created human because you thought of it. You became divine because of your breath and spirit in us. And then your only begotten son made the decision to be al forever alive in us. So here we are, thousands of years later, still aware that we are human beings, 
but carrying within us the divine Christ, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Bless us as we look forward to the experience of ascension, the experience of Pentecost, the experience of being so happy with the things that fill our lives with joy because of the presence that will be with us forever, to be people who understand what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Bless us, send us, all in Jesus' name, amen. We've been asked to remember in our prayers Kyle Craig, Paul Giggler, Kathy, Jack, and Natalie, and Nathaniel. For Sally and Tony, who are in deep grief over the sudden loss of their son, Sean. And for Ruth Nay, as she continues to face the lonely challenge of aging. Carol Swift as she continues her recovery from hip replacement surgery, and also uh, Joe Bursick Sr. as he prepares for surgery. Let us pray. Compassionate God, before we were born, your watchful eye was upon us. And in your wisdom, you have provided the loving care and nurture that we have needed since our birth. Through special people who have befriended and encouraged us, we have moved closer to your grace. The events of our lives have also served your loving purpose, as through easy victories and hard-fought struggles, you have guided our growth in faith. Even now, knowing the needs of our lives, you provide for us that through faith we may overcome all of the trials of this life and with our ascended Lord inherit your kingdom. Grant to all of your children your creative eye so that we may see the possibilities that you provide for us. Send us your spirit to empower us that by faith we may persevere through all life's trials and daily increase in us the love of Jesus that we might fulfill your heavenly purpose in our earthly lives. Once again, we pray for our world wounded by violence. Mend our hearts and the hearts of all of your people that we may love peace and pursue it. Almighty God, you have given us this good land for our heritage. On this Memorial Day weekend, 
we humbly ask that we may always prove ourselves to be a people mindful of your blessing and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from discord and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought here out of many peoples and many tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we trust the authority of our government, that there may be justice at peace at home, and that through obedience to your law we may show your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, do not allow our trust in you to fail. Though the whole creation groans while waiting for redemption, we know that nothing will separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, we humbly pray together as he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You did hear about the little girl who, after the pastor had an impassioned uh, speech about the building program that the church was going to undertake, and how they needed everybody's money, how this little girl came up to the pastor with enthusiasm, with joy, and gave him a, ten, uh, a dime, and said, here, here you are for the building, let me know if you need some more. It is with that joy that we present our offerings and that confidence we present our offerings to the Lord.
Lord, we stand before you with our gifts, with our lives. You have filled us to overflowing, and we share with joy these gifts that you have given us. Indeed, bless us and the gifts. As we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Just a reminder that we'd need some help in uh, clearing the chancel and making it ready for this afternoon. We need workers, a few supervisors, but mostly 
workers to help us clear them. Indeed, Christ is lifted up and our cups are filled to overflowing. And may the Christ who does so bring you peace, mercy, and love from now till it's coming again as God's people say, Amen. Amen.